December of 2019, Chinese health authorities were investigating reports of pneumonia cases in the one province. These investigations later proved that there was an outbreak of a new virus and that the source was being investigated. Eventually, it was determined that the virus now called a novel coronavirus, COVID-19, had been transmitted in a wet market from animal to person. The first death to this virus was recorded in Wuhan, China, and was that of a 61-year-old male who had recently traversed the wet market. Within weeks, the virus had spread through person-to-person -person contact in Asian and European countries due to open free travel that was taking place. By the time the alarm was raised in most cases, it had been too late with thousands of cases being reported daily. Wuhan, a province of approximately 11 million people, went on immediate lockdown and this aided in the containment and mitigation of transmission of the virus. Being aware of what was going on around the world, Guyana was put on guard and immediately started preparatory measures to ensure that COVID-19 does not come to this country. By the time the World Health Organization had declared COVID-19 a pandemic, Guyana had recorded its first COVID-19 case on March 11. Director General of the World Health Organization spoke of how quickly the virus was spreading. The pandemic is accelerating. It took 67 days from the first reported case to reach the first 100,000 cases. 11 days for the second 100,000 cases. And just four days for the third 100,000 cases. You can see how the virus is accelerating. Countries had the responsibility of keeping out imported cases by having strict screening measures at borders and airports, quarantining suspected cases and ramping up testing for the virus. Guyana did the same. The Health Emergency Operations Center was activated and the National Public Health Reference Lab was equipped to do testing. Unfortunately, Guyana's first case was imported and was diagnosed posthumously after the 52-year-old female patient died of severe respiratory complications at the Georgetown Public Hospital. Since then, a total of 12 deaths have been recorded up to June 17, 2020, the youngest of these being a 30-year-old medical technician. We understand the seriousness of Mr. COVID-19. He is a respecter of no one. And so it is our responsibility to ensure that we keep Guyana safe. The coronavirus became widespread throughout the country, with cases being recorded in seven of the ten administrative regions. As of June 14, Region 1 recorded 12 positive cases, Region 3, 15 positive cases, Region 4 recorded 106 cases, Region 6 with 1 case, Region 7 with 15 positive cases, Region 9 with 1, and Region 10 with 9 cases. The breakdown of deaths by region indicated Region 4 has the most deaths, 9 being from Region 4, 1 from Region 1, 1 from Region 6, and 1 from Region 10. Clearly, Region 4 has borne the infection burden, thus being referred to as the epicenter. Many areas, especially in the capital city, have recorded cases of the coronavirus. Central Georgetown continues to be the epicenter with the positive cases identified coming from the following communities. In the north of Georgetown, Kitty, Sophia, Turkine, Lillian Dahl, Cummins Lodge, Albertown, and Cumminsburg. In the south of Georgetown, Border, Lamaha Park, South Rhineville Gardens, and Terce Park. Today, I wish to add the following communities. Camberville, 
East Rheinveld, Guyhawk Park, Lodge, All Boys Town, and Ling Avenue. May 31 to June 6 was the longest period the country had gone without a positive case being recorded, although testing was being done continuously. 153 cases were recorded on May 31. 169 tests were done, after which only new cases were recorded as of June 6. Even as the first round of emergency orders were in effect from April 3 to May 3, 59 new positive cases were recorded. For the second round, May 3 to June 3, 71 positive cases were recorded. PAHO, WHO country representative in Ghana, Dr. William Adukro, had explained that while the infection rate for Ghana was high, the emergency measures put in place had cushioned a projected number of positive cases which wouldn't have been possible if the government didn't act swiftly. By April 5th, the number of cases projected were 32, but we had 23. So it means nine persons were prevented from getting COVID because of measures that have been taken. April 7, we should have, we, we should have had 50 cases. We had 35. That means 15 persons were prevented from getting no COVID. By April 9, 81, but we had 37. That means 44 persons were prevented. April 13, April 11, 124 were projected. We had 45. That means 79 were prevented from getting um, the, you know, you know, the COVID because of measures that, you know, that had been taken. April 13, 190, but we had 47. Minus 143 people, you know, persons were saved. April 15, 295, we had only 55. That means 240 persons were spared. When coronavirus had first been detected in Ghana, 10 days, March 18 to 28, went by without a new case being recorded. However, just about 38 persons were tested during this period. Since then, the ministry has ramped up testing efforts by introducing a mobile unit which has been traveling to different areas, giving persons the opportunity to get tested. Also, a COVID-19 facility has been set up at Paradise on the east coast of Demerara and at Herstelling on the east bank of Demerara, allowing more persons who think they might have been in contact with a positive COVID-19 case to come forward and know their status. The ministry's move to have more tests done was a measure to stop transmission of the coronavirus. Once a person knows their status, they will act accordingly once negative, they will take in hand the guidelines of social distancing, proper hand hygiene, stay at home wearing a mask and whatever else needed to be practiced to prevent an infection. Once positive, that person is immediately isolated until a full recovery and is medically cleared by a physician. For those persons in isolation, they will be held for 14 days, after which... If no new symptoms develop within three days prior to the 15th day, they will be tested twice within 24 hours. If negative, they will be cleared, but those with positive results will remain in further isolation. As of June 14, 99 cases were reported to have fully recovered while 48 remained in isolation. Meanwhile, transmission has become slow with the emergency orders expiring on June 17. Taking into consideration the worsening situation in Suriname and Venezuela, the lifting of emergency measures will be done in a phased approach. For example, the international airports will be open to flights beginning in July, but there will be a number of measures in place to ensure there is not another imported case of the coronavirus. For example, the international airports will be open to flights beginning in July, but there will be a number of measures in place to ensure there is not another imported case of the coronavirus. Thanks for watching.
The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating effect on communities all across Guyana. Many households and individuals now find themselves in need of public assistance. The government of Guyana will be assisting the most vulnerable. Those eligible to apply for this assistance are as follows. Individuals and or households who are currently benefiting from public assistance provided by the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who applied for public assistance and are awaiting a response from the Ministry of Social Protection. Individuals and or households who suffered a loss of income due to COVID-19. And households headed by senior citizens or persons with disabilities. Application forms can be downloaded from the Ministry of Social Protection's website at www.mosp.gov.gy or government.gy forward slash eform forward slash 241. For further information, please call these numbers. We are in this together. This is a message from the government of Guyana. We are here to serve you.